Hello and happy bank holiday Monday. Um, so I wanted to do another video talking about how I experience gallbladder attacks alongside my period as well. Um, I don't know if this is a it happens for everybody kind of situation, but I've noticed it definitely is for me to where I have had attacks that haven't been triggered by anything. Um, and the only real explanation is that my period has been happening at the same time. So I sit, I did look it up and it seems that hormonal fluctuations can contribute to attacks as they happen. So that was something that happened to me on Friday night. Um, kind of out of nowhere, I had finished work for the day and I was settled and um, I was settled for the evening. I was watching TV um, and I just felt the pain come on all of a sudden. And like literally it was a, there was pain in my back and there was pain in my stomach as I've described before that it happened like this. I didn't have that little jump like kick or punch from the inside like I said before or at least I wasn't aware of it happening. Sometimes that can be a case with the PMS because you, I'm already aware that that's happening so I may not be as in tune to the gallbladder and those differences when I'm you know coming up to my period. So it was a moment of is that Mm, the a gallbladder attack happening or am I getting cramps um but no I let a couple of minutes go by just to see um so I'm not like throwing painkillers at anything um but a couple of minutes went by it was definitely or at least the pain was definitely that of the gallbladder so I took my painkillers and I started drinking my water. I already had the hot water bottle. It was already on my side. Excuse me. And that happened. So, um, it thankfully it wasn't very long lived. Um, the painkillers seemed to it pretty quickly. I was out of it by probably in an hour it was all gone um and interestingly enough i did notice as well at um i didn't have that exhaustion that usually accompanies it even though it definitely was a gallbladder attack um sorry notification um but yeah so that kind of led to throw in a bit of a spanner in the works for me for the rest of the weekend because I was uh, setting up to get packing for my trip on Saturday and I had every intention of, of trying to film some of that um, and that didn't exactly happen. I did go over some of my um, carry-on items yesterday, um, which I'll show you. Uh, I'll put it in this video too. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I had gotten it, gotten home and I got into it and I just kept going and I had it all done because I needed, I was exhausted at that point so I really did need to get in to get rest. Um, but I did sort of realize that there are a few things that happen in the days following an attack that I didn't touch on previously so this is going to be a little bit of TMI and I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet but after it happens there is a significant issue with wind and gas and that could mean burping it could mean flatulence um but it will be like that for a fair few days for well not a fair few days for the next day definitely 
but potentially the next couple of days. That's something there that you need to be aware of. I kind of see it as the body kind of um, balancing or equalizing again. Um, and something else that can happen, or at least it's what I've, this happens no matter the attack. For me, I get constipated after the attack and it takes a couple of days for my body to kind of sort it out itself. I don't do anything to help it along. I just let my body sort itself out and it usually rightifies in a couple of days. It's not a big deal, but it is something to watch for because if constipation is something that you are prone to, this may be something that exaggerates it or irritates it or exasperates it a little bit more. So something else to be really, really mindful of. So in the day, in the hours and the days following the attack, it's uh, one of the most important things you can do is again, is focus on your rest, focus on your hydration, and really importantly, stick to a diet of low fat foods, um, stay away from any trigger foods. Um, even if you don't, you haven't historically had any issues with them with your gallstones. It's um, just sort of give your body a rest to to I suppose heal a little bit to kind of get back to your quote unquote normal um, while you're dealing with the gallstone situation. completely trashed and I never picked up the camera at all but right now I am trying to piece together my like charger case so we're gonna go take a look at that and while we're at it I'm trialing you being on a tripod so I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring it with or not Whoa. but let's have a look at what's happening over here so here is my at home organizer it's got everything there got a couple of things going over here um my kindle basic is being charged and then that will be good to go into the carry-on here i have this case with um to take everything i'm gonna try it and do it with one hand oh please hold So, oh, well, that's where I put my Airfly Pro. That needs a charging. Um, iPad will go in there. Pencil will go down there. Kindle Basic, Kindle Paperwhite, and that and headphones, which are here, are going to be placed in this bag, which will be at my feet, so it will be more easily accessible. This is my uh, cabin case, which I will be going into in a moment because I have a couple of things in there that I'm not sure about certain 
cables for for charging or if I need to have seconds some I will so I already have my Kindle paper white charger in there which I already have a second one and then I have a this is pro honestly this is going to be the third <laughs> um iPhone iPod I iPad charger going in there my adapters and all that kind of stuff the uh, adapters themselves are in the checked bag and my main like brick that takes the irish plug uh, takes two usbs and three usb c's that's in my cabin case as well so i have horrendous lighting as well but we've made massive strides in getting this sorted and yeah so we're just going to power on and hopefully then next week we only have to check over things so for my carry-on here i just have opened the case i have all my medicines and supplements in this bag it says meds then i have a fan here one of the fans and in there, there's a room door lock. Um, that, oh, that's what that little, I think. So I have this fan. And it opens out like this. It's pretty decent. Um, I like it because it can be like folded down and small, but I do have the other one as well. It's three different. Might want to make sure that we're not catching hair in that. <laughs> Um, and that is what this little connector is for. Okay, so before I keep checking on the um, electronics here, I'll show you. I have my, the jewelry that I'm bringing in this. I might be bringing one more necklace, but uh, for now it's all here. Then I've got a packing cube with a spare set of clothes. PJs, some extra underwear, some socks, just in case anything happens to the checked bag that I have that. Then I've got my peppermint tea bags down there. And we're using every little bit of room in this on this side of things. Okay. So in this bag here, I have my other fan, my original one, this is the Easyac one. Um, it can be handheld like that. It's pretty strong. Or it can be sat up on a table. I've, if you're having a drink or you're eating something outside, this comes in really useful. Then this bag is obviously for, for liquids, but uh, I'm utilizing it for something else. This is my adapter for all other things. So you see you can put your plug in here and I will select the USA pin here. Or if you're going, um, you can use the UK one or the EU one. Right, so there's a few on it. and But you also get two regular USBs, two USB-Cs. And then you get a third one, and I think this is a fast charge side. So this is excellent. I really love. I love these. I've had one of them before, and it died on me. But when I seen it come, and you can actually get it in its own little case, I was sold. Okay, and because I like white noise when I sleep, I didn't want to be relying on my phone because of um, losing battery power and whatnot. So I got this. This is one for travel and it can be used with um, on baby's cribs and buggies and prams and things like that. So you've got your on button on this side, volume up, volume down. These buttons actually glow in the dark, which is great. Um, then you've got your different menus here so turn it on so it's like rain falling then I, or I could switch to white noise yeah. that's like a fan air conditioner 
listening different than there's the nature sounds fire birds and then there's a lullaby function so I really like this I thought this was a good buy so can't wait to use this sorry on this side we have a mishmash of things so I've got my sunglasses I've got a tote bag um, my notebook and pen my water bottle and my hot water bottle so um, if you've seen any of my gallbladder videos you'll know why I'm taking that so we have that there and um, again this is not staying this way I'm going to try and work it so that I can put in these here until I'm sorting myself to get on the plane and then when I'm with this at my feet on the plane it, this is only holding the things that I want on the plane now on to my personal item I have a thing about having over full bags now but I kind of I figured with packing yesterday and the way it went so well with my checked case there are things that have to come on with me just to make life a little easier and they're gonna weigh a little bit but I think I have it figured out so I have the case here okay now for safety reasons my wallet passport phone and my camera will be going in this okay this will be I will wear this security aren't going to care that I have three bags going through they just won't then when I'm boarding the plane this can be slid down inside of this bag so what's going in this bag will be my electronics so that's just another case for my iPad I'm moving I'm going to be changing to this one because it's a little bit more sturdy than the one that I'm using currently in terms of how it sits in it and the actual back of it is is more rugged as well so this case will take iPad and both Kindles and notebook as well I think will can be fit down there in that pocket that headphones again this I may try I'm going to try and aim to get that into the case until I'm sort of sorting myself out in the lounge for the flight. This is my travel document holder. This has my accommodation vouchers. It's got my gift card vouchers. It's got my dining card vouchers. My transfers, my ESTA printout is, in, is on this. And my fast track information is in here. Then... Once I print out my boarding pass, it'll go in here. Um, my printer's been acting funny as well. It's brand new ink, but it's not printing the black side. So I may have to try to figure that out because I do not want to try be figuring out a printer the day before I travel. So that that's something that will happen this week. Then I have my liquids bag, which... It doesn't only have liquids in it, but it's got things that I'm going to be needing so maybe throughout the flight. So I have deodorant, some stuff for freshening up my powder foundation, um, some perfume, a hairbrush. That. Now I have to put my Sudafed in that, but I have my painkillers in it. Um, just so, just in case I don't have to go to the meds bag here. Um, I already have something to hand, but a nasal spray has to go in that. Um, and I just have a facial spray. I have some liquid IV in there for the flight. Like just some bits, not too crazy. And you can see there's a fair bit of room left in that. But I actually found out yesterday that the scanners were through the terminal that I'm traveling through have all been changed to the updated version so I don't have to worry about taking my liquids or my electronics out which is super helpful now because I can have them packed in a way that is 
suitable for getting on the plane um, at least initially they'll I'll arrange everything the way that I need it to be arranged when I'm in the lounge and I'm packing up to leave um, because obviously I'm going to be using my iPad and things like that in the lounge anyway so so back to this so while I'm traveling through the airport and making sure of a few things this is my tech bag that's been completed as well so these things will go in there with a packed lunch or the pack I will figure it out the packed lunch will either go in that or in the case for transport purposes and then will be transferred to this or it will just go in this first this bag has my claw grip on it just in case I want it on the plane the bag will go here and will be kept on the case and then I will wear this bag um, my phone will be in it my wallet anything that might you know my passport anything that really needs eyes and ears and both hands on it at all times will go on this and I will wear this through the airport again security aren't going to care that I have that extra bag but Aer Lingus might when I'm getting on so that bag then will just for purpose of getting on the plane will be slot down inside there and it can stay there then until I'm getting off and we can whip it back out and wear it through um, when we're when we're getting off the plane on the other side so that is it for this video you've we've caught up with some more gallstone flare-up issues um some more healing tips and you've seen some of my packing process you've seen my carry-on situation and yeah so that's all for this video if you have any questions regarding the gallbladder um or any kind of situation that you're going through that maybe you want um, some sort of, I can't give medical advice. Um, I can only kind of tell you like what I did and in my experience, what's helped and what hasn't helped. But if you do have any questions regarding them, do leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to get back as quickly as possible to you. Um, because I have found myself that I'm more, interested in reading about people living with the issue or at least living with the issue until that they can until they can have the procedure done I'm more interested in that and seeing what they're doing what's working for them what's not working for them than I am from really hearing from like the medical community side of things because that can be a one-size-fits-all and Sometimes, like, I mean, I would never have found the apple cider vinegar and lemon juice trick by looking at the, the medical side of things. My doctor would never have approached that, I don't think, anyway. Um, I did find that on my own. I found that from um, a search on Instagram, of all places, you know. So if there's anything that I might be able to help you with please do let me know um regardless of if it's now or you're watching this video sometime in the future and it's happening to you i hope i hope it doesn't because it's an it's horrible it's not a nice situation but if by some chance it is and you want to ask me a question please do leave it below and i will try to get back to you as quickly as possible so that's it for today thanks for watching and i'll see you next time